At Rainbow Mealworms, we grow all our insects 100% naturally so that you get the freshest, most lively feeders on the market. So for all your reptile food needs, place your order today at rainbowmealworms.net. Hey, what's up, Rattlers? So one of the things that I love about reptiles is not just getting out into the world and finding exotic reptiles in exotic locales. It's breeding reptiles here in my home facility. And right now, we're about to cut open a very exciting clutch of ball python eggs. I'm Dave Kaufman and I am obsessed with reptiles. And I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. All right, Rattler, so a couple of these guys have already pipped. We're on day 62. I don't know what it is, but all of my clutches this year are going a little late. So this clutch was sired by a leopard banana female maker, Het Pied, and the dame was this low white pied. And what I'll do is I'll wait until the first baby's pip. And this clutch is at day 62, which usually it's about 58 to 60 days, give or take five, 10 days, whatever it is, based on your incubation temperatures. So I incubate directly at 89 degrees in my homemade incubator. You guys may remember the video I made about how I made this incubator. I'm gonna list that link in the description below and I'm gonna put it boink right there too, or maybe over there depending on where YouTube puts it. Boink, boink. Okay, so once the babies have pipped on their own, what I'm going to do is I'll just take a very sharp X-Acto knife like this one and I'm just going to cut the rest of the eggs open and I'm going to also make these incisions that the snakes themselves have made. I'm just gonna make them a little bit bigger. So let's start with this one right here. So this one is already pipped. So I'm just gonna carefully open this hole a little bit more, being very careful not to touch the snake inside. And I'm just gonna make that hole much bigger. So with a sharp X-Acto knife like this, that should open right like a zipper. And look at that, I can see a lot of white in there. This one is gonna be a pied. But I can see the normal head, so that's a normal pied. All right, Rattler, so the first egg cut open is a pied. I couldn't be happier than that. And there's a lot of white, so this is gonna be a high white pied. That's Maddie, my girlfriend's dog. Hi. All right, so on to egg number two. I see a lot of funky pattern in here. This one is not a pied, but because of that funky pattern, I'm guessing this one is leopard. All right, on to the next egg here. So look at this really weird white spot here. It's a pied, but because of that pattern, I'm gonna call this one a leopard pied. All right, so so far we've got what seems to be a leopard pied, we have a normal leopard het pied, and we have a high white pied. This one I can see yellow in, this one's gonna be a banana. Let's cut this one open. Look at that. Oh, killer. It is banana, and there's a lot of white, and that is a banana pied hatching out. All right, so the leopard male het pied that I use to sire this clutch is what's called a female maker, which means that any bananas in this clutch could actually be females. So this banana pied that I just cut open could actually be a female banana pied. I'm just gonna wait until they come out of their eggs on their own to find out for sure, but let's move on to the next one. All right, so this egg underneath this one has hatched out on its own, so I'm just gonna move this egg out of the way, and I'm just gonna cut this open like this. There we go, just like that. And look at that, guys. Whoa! Hi, little buddy. So that one has a lot of white on it too, another banana pied. This one actually could be leopard. All right, Rattler, so out of a nine egg clutch, we've cut five open. I've got a normal pied, I've got two banana pieds, I've got a leopard and a leopard pied. I am just killing it on the odds with this clutch. So we've got four more that haven't pipped, so we're gonna make the first incision on these four eggs that haven't pipped. And this is always a little hair raising for me because I hate cutting eggs before they've actually pipped on their own, but I really got to see what's in here. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, I see normal. Yeah, it looks like just a normal. That pattern might be a little bit funky, so it could be leopard. I don't see any white, so that one's a leopard. So when I cut eggs that haven't yet pipped on their own, I don't cut a huge hole in the top like some other breeders do. All I want to do is peek inside and see what I've got. 
I think that, you know, cutting the top of the egg open is called skylighting. I've seen on some forums people have been calling it that. I'm not exactly sure makes sense. So I never cut a huge hole in the top of the egg because all the ambionic fluid can leak out, the yolk can leak out. If the baby isn't ready yet, that's going to dry out the baby and you have a really good chance of killing the baby inside. So I always cut an X, peel the flaps back, see what baby I have in there, and then put the flaps back until the baby is ready to come out on their own. All right, three eggs left. All right, here we go. Just like that. And then we're going to cut an X. And we're gonna look inside. I sound like Bob Ross, don't I? Happy little trees. All right, so you can see that this one still has a lot of yolk left, but it is a pied. And so that one probably wasn't ready to hatch yet. We're just gonna put that back like that and wait for the best. All right, we have two more eggs left. Let's cut these bad boys open. I can see that's a normal, but again, it has a funky pattern. So that is another leopard. I don't see any white. So that's just a leopard hat pied. One more egg left. Let's cut this baby open here. All right, what do we see inside this one? All right, so that one's not a banana either. And I don't see any white, so that looks like just a normal hat pied. All right, Rattler, so out of this clutch from a Leo banana hat pied to a pied, it looks like we've got two banana pieds. Hopefully one of them is female, or both of them is female. We've got one pied, one leopard pied, and then the rest of them are all normal coloration. I can't really see right now if they're going to be leopard or if they're going to be just plain old het pied. Either way, this ain't a bad clutch. Four pieds out of a nine egg clutch, that's eh, probably right about average. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to stick these guys back in the incubator for a couple of days. I'm going to let them come out on their own, and then we're really going to see what I got in this clutch. All right, so it's a couple of days later, and what I'll do after the babies hatch or until I cut them open is I'll let those babies come out on their own. I never force the babies out just to see what I've got. That can be really detrimental to the babies. So after I let them hatch out on their own, I'll bring them into this room, and this baby rack is set up specifically for baby ball pythons. And so what I'll do is I'll leave them alone for a couple of days after they hatch out. Because what baby ball pythons are doing is their bellies are full of that yolk that they've absorbed in the egg. And so they will sit and absorb that yolk. They won't be ready to eat for quite a while after they have hatched. But what they'll do is they'll sit on that heat, they'll absorb that yolk, and then they'll have their first shed. And a couple of days after that first shed is when I'll try to give them their first meal. But it's after that first shed that the colors on these babies really pop. See what I mean by pop? Look at that baby. So what I thought was just a banana pied actually turned out to be a banana leopard pied. Look at the purples come out in this pied. Look what that leopard gene does. Those purples just pop in a leopard pied. I couldn't be happier with this guy. So this guy's a male. But look at his brother, another leopard banana pied. Oh man, that purple, I just hope, is going to be darker and darker with every shed. So these are two leopard banana pieds. And then I only thought that we had two other pieds in that clutch, but we've got one pied here, which is just a pied, but look at how high white this guy is. Perfectly high white, pattern only on the head. Look at that body, not a mark on him. So if you like really high white pieds, man, that is just an amazing pied. And then we've got what could be a leopard pied, but I don't know, it's so hard to tell some of these pieds if they have leopard in them or not. But that is just a great look. Another high white pied, markings on the tail, just a great looking snake here. And then that pied is definitely leopard pied. You can tell by the little spots on the saddles and it just looks just a bit different than just a normal pied. So we've got a leopard het pied and a normal het pied. And you can see the vast difference between the leopard and the normal. But look at this clutch. Look at these banana leopard pieds and just this leopard pied here, just the normal leopard pied is beautiful. But man, when you add that banana gene to it, those purples just start screaming. I could not be happier with this clutch. So again, we've got one, two, three pieds. This one's a leopard. We've got two banana leopard pieds. We've got two leopards and a normal. 
I just simply could not be happier with this clutch. So I'm just going to put them back in this rack. I'm going to let them sit on that heat. I'm going to let them absorb that yolk a little bit more. And then I'm going to offer them their first meal. And sometimes you kind of got to teach baby ball pythons what food is. Some of them eat right away on their own. Some of them don't. But I'm going to make a video about how to feed really finicky baby ball pythons. So keep an eye out for that. Also, I've just recently launched Patreon because let's face it, these episodes are kind of expensive, and yes, my channel is sponsored by Rainbow Mealworms and Zilla, but there's a lot of expenses that go into these videos that the sponsorship doesn't cover. So please take a look at our Patreon, and if you'd like to become a patron, I would sincerely appreciate it. So anyway, guys, travel season for me is coming up pretty soon, so there's going to be a lot of really exciting adventures coming up. I never travel this time of year because I have all the baby ball pythons hatch, and I don't want to be out of town for this and miss all this, let alone all the care that these baby ball pythons need. So this time of year I don't travel, but as soon as these baby ball pythons start eating on their own and they start selling, my travel adventures start again. So keep an eye out for those videos, and until the next adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on. <laughs>